Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be diving into the science of nuclear fission and breaking down the basics. If you've ever been curious about how nuclear reactors work and the amazing process of splitting atoms, you're in for a treat. Let's get started. Before me dropping value bombs of this video, I would like to introduce the Nuclear Power Engineering Principles course, now available on Udemy. This comprehensive course is your ticket to mastering the principles of nuclear power engineering and taking your career to new heights. Packed of engaging lectures, this course is designed to provide you with a deep understanding of nuclear power engineering principles. And the best part? Upon completing the course, you will receive a prestigious certificate of completion to showcase your newly acquired skills and knowledge. It is a valuable credential that can open doors to exciting career opportunities in the nuclear power industry. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to unlock your potential with Nuclear Power Engineering Principles course. Enroll now and gain access to this top-rated course at an unbeatable price. But hurry, as this offer won't last long. Join us today and take the first step towards a successful career in nuclear power engineering. Enroll now in the Nuclear Power Engineering Principles course on Udemy and unlock your potential. Don't wait and start your learning journey now. Now, if you're interested, the link to this course is provided in the video description below. Nuclear fission is the process of splitting the nucleus of an atom into two or more smaller nuclei, along with the release of an immense amount of energy. This process is at the heart of how nuclear reactors generate electricity. But how does it work? Let's dive into the details. To understand the science of nuclear fission, it's important to first grasp the basic structure of an atom. Atoms are the building blocks of matter and are composed of three main components, protons, neutrons, and electrons. At the center of an atom is the nucleus, which is a small, dense, positively charged core. The nucleus contains protons and neutrons, which are tightly bound together. Protons are positively charged particles, and they are crucial in determining the chemical properties of an element. The number of protons in the nucleus is referred to as the atomic number and determines the identity of the element. For example, an atom with one proton is hydrogen, while an atom with six protons is carbon. Electrons are negatively charged particles that orbit around the nucleus in energy levels or electron shells. These electrons are responsible for the chemical behavior of atoms and their interactions with other atoms. Electrons are much smaller and lighter than protons and neutrons, and they are found in constant motion around the nucleus. Neutrons are neutral particles found in the nucleus of an atom. They do not have any charge, and their main role is to add stability to the nucleus. Neutrons help to keep the protons in the nucleus together as protons being positively charged would naturally repel each other. The number of neutrons in the nucleus can vary, and atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes. In nuclear fission, a heavy nucleus, such as uranium-235, absorbs a neutron, becomes unstable, and splits into two or more smaller nuclei along with the release of additional neutrons and a significant amount of energy. The process of nuclear fission sets off a chain reaction, where the newly formed smaller nuclei release more neutrons that can go on to cause additional fission reactions in other nuclei. This chain reaction produces an enormous amount of energy in the form of heat, which is used to generate electricity in nuclear reactors. The chain reaction is a self-sustaining process that occurs during nuclear fission. It begins when a heavy nucleus, such as uranium-235, absorbs a neutron and becomes unstable, leading to the nucleus splitting into two smaller nuclei, along with the release of several additional neutrons. These additional neutrons can then go on to cause fission in other heavy nuclei, which in turn release more neutrons 
leading to a cascade of fission reactions. This creates a self-sustaining chain reaction that continues as long as there are enough fissile material and neutrons present to sustain it. The energy release in nuclear fission is a result of the conversion of mass into energy, according to Einstein's famous equation E equals mc2, where E represents energy, m represents mass, and c represents the speed of light. During fission, a small amount of mass is converted into an enormous amount of energy. The energy is released in the form of kinetic energy of the fission fragments, the smaller nuclei resulting from the fission process, as well as in the form of gamma radiation, which is a highly energetic form of electromagnetic radiation. The fission fragments are typically highly radioactive and continue to release energy through radioactive decay. The kinetic energy of the fission fragments is transferred to the surrounding material as heat, which can be harnessed to generate electricity in nuclear power plants. The gamma radiation is also released as heat when it interacts with the surrounding material. To control the chain reaction and prevent a runaway release of energy, nuclear power plants use various safety measures, such as control rods made of materials that absorb neutrons to regulate the number of neutrons available to sustain the chain reaction. This allows for controlled and sustained energy release for practical use in power generation. Nuclear fission has a wide range of applications beyond electricity generation. Let's explore some of the practical uses of nuclear fission in various fields. Nuclear fission, the process of splitting the nucleus of an atom has several important applications in various fields. One of the most well-known and widespread applications of nuclear fission is in the generation of electricity in nuclear power plants. In a nuclear power plant, controlled nuclear fission reactions are used to produce heat, which is then used to generate steam and drive turbines to generate electricity. Nuclear power plants provide a significant source of baseload electricity, which is reliable and can meet large-scale energy demands, without emitting greenhouse gases or air pollutants associated with burning fossil fuels. However, safety measures, waste disposal, and non-proliferation concerns are important considerations in the use of nuclear power. Nuclear fission has been used in the field of propulsion, particularly in naval applications. Nuclear-powered submarines and aircraft carriers utilize nuclear fission reactions to produce steam, which powers turbines for propulsion, allowing for extended underwater operations and greater mobility. Nuclear propulsion offers advantages such as long endurance, high speed, and reduced reliance on external fuel supplies. Nuclear fission is also used in the production of radioisotopes which are radioactive isotopes of elements that have various applications in medicine, industry, and research. Radioisotopes are used in cancer treatment, radiography, sterilization of medical equipment, food irradiation, and industrial process control, among others. Nuclear reactors are used to produce radioisotopes by irradiating target materials with neutrons which induces nuclear reactions that result in the production of specific radioisotopes. Nuclear fission is used in research and education to study the fundamental properties of nuclear reactions and to train students in nuclear physics and engineering. Research reactors are specialized nuclear reactors that are used for a wide range of scientific experiments, such as investigating nuclear structure, studying radiation effects, and conducting materials research. These reactors are also used for educational and training purposes to prepare students and researchers for careers in the nuclear field. While not a peaceful application, nuclear fission has been used as a basis for nuclear weapons. The energy released by uncontrolled fission reactions in a nuclear bomb leads to a powerful explosion. However, it's important to note that the production and use of nuclear weapons are heavily regulated under international treaties and agreements, such as the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons NPT, which aims to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and promote disarmament.
While nuclear fission has many beneficial applications, it also comes with safety considerations. Safety measures are critical in nuclear power plants to ensure the safe and reliable operation of the reactors and to protect workers, the public, and the environment from potential hazards associated with nuclear energy. Containment structures are large, robust structures that are designed to prevent the release of radioactive materials to the environment, even in the event of severe accidents. They are typically made of reinforced concrete and steel and are designed to withstand external forces such as earthquakes, floods, and impacts from external objects. Containment structures are equipped with multiple layers of barriers, including a primary containment vessel that surrounds the reactor, a secondary containment building that provides an additional layer of protection, and sometimes a tertiary containment building for further safety. Nuclear power plants are equipped with multiple safety systems that can initiate an emergency shutdown of the reactor in the event of abnormal conditions. These systems are designed to rapidly shut down the nuclear chain reaction and bring the reactor to a safe state. One common system is the SCRAM system, which rapidly inserts control rods into the reactor to absorb neutrons and halt the fission chain reaction. Other systems, such as the reactor protection system and the engineered safety features, are also in place to detect and respond to abnormal conditions. Radiation shielding is an important safety measure in nuclear power plants to protect workers and the public from exposure to ionizing radiation. Shielding materials, such as concrete, lead, and steel, are used to absorb and block radiation emitted from the reactor and other radioactive materials. Shielding is applied in various areas of the plant, including the reactor building, control room and spent fuel storage areas, to minimize radiation exposure to workers and the environment. Nuclear power plants have comprehensive emergency preparedness and response plans in place to address potential accidents or incidents. These plans include procedures for notifying authorities and the public, evacuating and sheltering individuals if necessary, providing medical care, and mitigating the consequences of an incident. Regular training and drills are conducted to ensure that plant personnel and local emergency responders are well prepared to respond to emergencies effectively. Strict operational and maintenance practices are implemented in nuclear power plants to ensure the safe and reliable operation of the reactors. These practices include thorough inspections, maintenance of equipment and systems, rigorous quality control, and adherence to established procedures and guidelines. Plant personnel undergo extensive training and qualification programs to ensure their competence in operating and maintaining the complex systems in the plant. The concept of defense in depth is a fundamental principle in nuclear safety. It involves the use of multiple layers of safety measures, including physical barriers, engineered safety features, procedural controls, and human performance measures, to prevent accidents, detect and mitigate abnormal conditions, and minimize the consequences of incidents. This multi-layered approach helps to ensure redundancy and resilience in the safety measures, reducing the likelihood of failures and enhancing overall safety. Lastly, Nuclear power plants are subject to strict regulatory oversight by national and international regulatory authorities. These authorities set and enforce regulations and standards for the design, construction, operation, and decommissioning of nuclear power plants. Regular inspections, assessments, and audits are conducted to verify compliance with regulatory requirements and ensure the safe operation of the plants. While nuclear fission has many advantages as a source of energy, there are also several challenges associated with its use. One of the major challenges of nuclear fission is the disposal of radioactive waste generated from nuclear power plants. Nuclear fuel used in reactors becomes radioactive and requires careful management and disposal. High-level radioactive waste, such as spent nuclear fuel, remains hazardous for thousands of years and requires long-term storage in secure facilities to prevent potential releases to the environment. 
finding suitable locations for waste disposal, ensuring the safe transportation of waste, and addressing public concerns about potential environmental and health impacts are significant challenges in the management of nuclear waste. Nuclear fission can also raise concerns related to nuclear proliferation, which refers to the potential for the spread of nuclear weapons. The same technology used for producing nuclear energy can also be used to produce materials for nuclear weapons. Therefore, ensuring the secure handling, transport, and storage of nuclear materials to prevent their misuse and unauthorized access is a significant challenge. International efforts, such as nuclear non-proliferation treaties, export controls, and safeguards, are in place to mitigate these concerns, but the risk of proliferation remains a challenge in the context of nuclear fission. Public perception and acceptance of nuclear fission as a source of energy can be a challenge. Nuclear incidents such as accidents or incidents at nuclear power plants, such as the Chernobyl and Fukushima disasters, have raised concerns about the safety of nuclear energy among the public. Fear of radiation exposure, concerns about potential accidents, and the long-term impact of nuclear waste disposal can lead to public opposition and skepticism towards nuclear fission as an energy source. Building public trust through transparency, communication, and education, addressing safety concerns, and involving stakeholders in decision-making processes are important steps in addressing public perception challenges. The capital cost of building nuclear power plants can be high and the economic viability of nuclear fission as a source of energy depends on various factors such as plant construction, operation and maintenance costs, regulatory requirements, and market conditions. The long construction time of nuclear power plants and uncertainty in regulatory environments can further impact the economic feasibility of nuclear fission. Additionally, the availability and price of nuclear fuel such as enriched uranium, can also affect the cost of nuclear energy production. While nuclear power plants have multiple safety measures in place, the potential for accidents or incidents, although rare, remains a concern. Accidents at nuclear power plants, such as the Chernobyl and Fukushima disasters, have had severe consequences, including loss of life, environmental damage, and economic impacts. Ensuring the highest level of safety in the design, operation, and maintenance of nuclear power plants, and addressing human factors, equipment failures, and natural disasters that may lead to accidents, is a continuous challenge. Decommissioning of nuclear power plants at the end of their operational life is another challenge associated with nuclear fission. Safe dismantling and disposal of nuclear facilities managing radioactive waste generated during decommissioning, and restoring the site to its original condition requires careful planning, technological expertise, and regulatory compliance. The legacy of radioactive waste and contaminated sites from past nuclear activities, such as nuclear weapons testing and uranium mining, also presents challenges for long-term management and remediation. And lastly, Although nuclear energy does not produce greenhouse gas emissions during electricity generation, the extraction, processing, and transport of nuclear fuel, as well as the construction and decommissioning of nuclear power plants, can have environmental impacts. Uranium mining, for example, can have environmental and social consequences. And that wraps up our overview of the science of nuclear fission. We've explored the basics of how nuclear fission works, its applications in various fields, and the safety considerations and challenges associated with it. We hope you found this episode informative and gained a better understanding of this fascinating process. If you're enjoying learning about the exciting world of engineering on our channel, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out and you won't want to miss any of our upcoming videos.